Yo, this is the Gearheads Breakcast. I am Shadow Rock and Pro for One of the Floor Gangs and Nutmeg Tribe. And Aloha Kako. This is Jay Soul from Eternal Style and BTR Breaking. Shout out to all the Gearheads. Thank you for tuning in. We are here for you. We're here weekly. Thank you for the support. We love you. And make sure you guys are subscribed and hit the bell to get notified about everything that we got coming up here. Yo, Profo, what's good, man? How you been? I'm good. Just been chilling, resting up a little bit, doing my regular workout thing. Um, just trying to, like, uh, get ready for Massive Monkeys. What about you, Jay? Oh, nice. Are you going? We'll see. <laughs> you got, you got, what, days, right, until it comes up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. We'll see if it, it if everything works out the way it's supposed to. I'll be out there. Okay, nice. I hope you do, man, because, yeah, that's going to make a good episode on the next one. I want to hear all about yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. One of the staple jams here in the U.S., so. Nice, man. I hope, I hope things work out for you on that. Yeah, for Hopefully. sure. How yeah. about you, man? You just, yeah, you just, uh, you just came from a, a fishing trip just now or what? <laughs> I Texas. And, uh, yeah, so <clears throat> what did I do today? I woke up early, man. I woke up to a thunderstorm. It was crazy, man. It rattled my brain. It was thunder, lightning. The light was like lighting up my whole, like my eyes were closed like this and I woke up to it. Whoa. craziest thing ever man but i love it man it reminds me of back home oh, so sure, sure. so i'm liking that man um so i woke up to that and i actually linked up with habit coral and them at a adult oh, yeah. session yeah yeah so it was uh who was there zeshin jeremy palmer super cool guys man and it was actually zeshin's birthday and we give him uh the traditional 35 round uh little welcome into 35 years i can't do that no more man <laughs> that's too many rounds bro i'm turning 47 next month i can't do no damn 47 rounds bro well you gotta watch how <laughs> they do it these days and i know you know all about that it's about the pacing with what yeah true but we're not blasting full competition rounds but you're just letting people know hold on nah, i like to go in though man <laughs> That's why I can't do it. I could do an easy 47 of bullshit for sure, <laughs> but yeah. I'm not doing that. It take, takes it a few or several steps above the uh, the who can roast the most 10 round. Uh, yeah, there you go. Format there, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, today's uh, show is about workshops to level up. But before we talk about that, uh, let's talk about our sponsor, Zen World. What, can you tell us about Zen World? Yes, uh, shout out to Zen World. Zen World. Check out zenworld.com. This is our CBD sponsor. If you guys don't know, CBD is a non psychoactive cannabis product and substance. It's all natural, non -form uh, habit forming. It's topical. They got ingestibles for it. And if you guys are dealing with aches and pains, topicals are amazing for relieving inflammation in your body. And with what we do, that's kind of the battle and the challenge that we need to overcome if we are to get to where we want to go. So these guys support us. You guys support us. We support you. We're one big family. Check them out, guys. Get used to this right here. This name, zenworld.com, 15% off. And go. that is that. So what's yeah, happening man. today, pro? So today, um, actually, you brought this up. Uh, we had to kind of reschedule a our interview with Zeshin. So uh, the topic we're like, we're trying to think, actually, you brought up this topic. You talked about, um, hey, you know, uh, Ronnie is doing a workshop series out there in Vegas. And, um, like, we should cover it. And I was like, really? And you're like, yeah, we, let's let's cover it. So um, I was just like, let's do it. So I'm going to pull up that clip of what uh, Ronnie has going on. Nice, man. Yeah. So it was actually kicked off last month with uh, me and Omar. So, uh, you know, o Omar, right? Obviously. Yeah, yeah. Te Texas staple. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just looked at this lineup and I was thinking, wow, this is all being offered to the Las Vegas Valley right here. If anybody is in the surrounding states, Utah, Arizona, um, obviously California, you guys have to check this out. Look at this. What you already seen was El Nino. Why not? We got the urban action figure. That's Rascal Randy. Here's El Nino. 
Boom, young legend, El Nino. And that one actually just happened, the El Nino workshop in Las Vegas this past weekend. And I reached out to oh, him. Word. Yeah, I was like, hey, yo, good luck on that, man. You know, thanks for coming to the Valley. You know, that, that was my second home after Hawaii. So I have, I have a, a deep affinity and connection to, to the Las Vegas Valley right there. Um, and he said, yeah, man, you know, workshops don't hit like they used to. And that's a real thing. Because, wow. bro, me and you, we, we come from the let's see something. Let's get lucky, man. Let's get lucky. Let's see something one time. And let's try and think about what happened right there. And that was the extent of our education and, and trying to learn stuff, really, right? Yeah, and I, I think that's the thing. The thing is that we basically, we we came from where it's just like you, like even for me, like I come from like pre-VHS almost, where it's like, or you had only one VHS and it was like maybe Beat Street or commercial and you would just try to like watch one clip and well, then yeah. hopefully, and hopefully get that, maybe rewind it and then learn from that. And then hopefully you met someone that knew how to break, right? That was it. So for me, it was, I seen somebody who's seen that right there, who's seen the VHS. Somebody's seen it, so it's even like that far from the original of what it was, right? So yeah, so we're having these workshops now from these legends, right? These living legends right here within the scene, people right. that found their unique connection and understanding of funk breaks, of their body's mechanics, and it's incredible, right? This is yeah. a schedule right here of, of workshops. So yeah, so like, okay, so before we start like introducing the people that, does, uh, that are doing the workshops, um, I think the talk is like, do people are afraid maybe to take them or maybe they feel like they don't wanna learn from somebody. How do you feel about that, Jay? How do you feel about like, you know, coming from like, we were like, and even there's YouTube, right? So why do I have to learn from this person when there's YouTube? Or there's IG, you know, there's Instagram or TikTok. I just watch it and learn from there. What do you, uh, do you think that's a plus, a minus? What's your opinions on just workshops in general? Well, we are in the YouTube era. So that, that obviously has a big uh, effect on it, right? We can see jams. We can, we can see styles evolve. We can see everything. We can learn anything on YouTube. So it's a little more energy to go out. And people are highly, highly discounting the face-to-face -face experience. Or a subject matter expert or a professional, right within our scene, can see what you're doing and they can they can update you on anything new that they've discovered. Because let's face it, this is an art, and when I say art, it's a science, right? So with that, it's it's a, an ex experimentation. It's a whole experience where these people, these these you know, these b boys that again they're, and b girls that are just incredible. They're, they're, they're coming up with new things every time and new discoveries, right? So it's so right. important just in that sense right there, right? Yeah, so I agree. Why it's not happening is A, YouTube, and, and B, like for me, Omar, if I'm not mistaken, was the first, no, I took a wacko workshop. Let me stand corrected because I need to work on my dancing. And that, that's one of the things is I come from the, the planet rock and the electro, electro <laughs> rock era where you just needed energy and you learn moves. And I learned moves quick because of that. Right. But there wasn't that funk. There wasn't that Afro kind of like funk and syncopation and jazz. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good dancer. Right. So, so for me, that's why I took it. Right. So I, I thought my psychology was, you know, I'm not good at this. Let, let me learn from something. But right. after that, I took Omar's workshop, you know, just last month and it's, it was so valuable, right? Like everything he was sharing from battle experience, he didn't do very much movements. He ran us through maybe like three or four steps and exercises, but the context of these movements in relation to how you're going to train, how you're going to battle. And how are you going to battle by yourself? How are you going to battle with the crew? How, how are you going to use it? How are you going to think about it? All this is is what you can't learn on a YouTube clip, right? True. And you'll get the feedback from the instructor or the expert. So, you know, the B-boy, right? We, we come with creating K-1 
character, persona, ego, right? So yeah. we're, we're going to, we're like, oh, shoot, I might battle this guy, or I might battle his student, or I might battle his crew or his camp, right? Yeah. So the tribal side of it is telling, has been telling me for a lot of years, no, nah, you know, like, yeah, I mean, that, that's why we, we stay away from it. Right, 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 right. No, I mean, I, I, I like, what you're saying is like on point, right? It's like, I'm going to battle this person or I'm going to battle their student. So why should I even take it? Yeah. But I think that's like one thing that's, yeah, the tribalistic part of breaking. There's just pros and cons. And the cons of it is it's not like skating culture, right? And just to give a quick example of that, the skating culture, if like, let's say Rodney Mullen, he made up the ground ollie, right? Um, you know, he was cheering the first person that got it. That's not from his camp. So when someone does their move, they actually are happy about it. Versus in breaking, it's like, you're a fighter. You're a fighter. Yeah, I created that. You know what I mean? Totally different. Like, you know, state, same difficulty and skills, creating something skill set. But the attitude is like, it's more supportive. Like, yeah, you did it. Mm -hmm. And we're more like, no, I'm going to battle you. <laughs> so it's like that tribalism. Like, there's pros and cons of it, right? Yeah, that's interesting that you bring that up, man. Um, Cause when somebody does say bite you, right? Like the, the you said the kick ollie. Yeah, the uh, flat ground ollie. A like, flat ground ollie. Yeah, if no one did it, there would be now, no street skating, bro. Now it's immortalized. Right. Yeah. So, so I mean, yeah. that's one way to view. Like when somebody does do something that you made up or you thought you made up, um, that's that's an incredible way to look at it, right? It's going to live beyond you. 100. And the more people 100. that do it, rather, rather than it, it uh, and if you are the source of this genius, you understand the foundations of it and the mindset, yep. the circumstances and the environment that created it. Right. Yeah. Level it up beyond where you Dude. first brought it. Right. Yeah. So, That's that. Yeah. And I mean, maybe we'll see. Maybe, you know, as the breaking scene moves on forward, maybe that will be the new standard. It'll be kind of like, we'll still compete, we'll still battle, but maybe it won't be as tribalistic and so toxic. You know, and we can go into that, like hip hop's from a, from a, like, you know, a, a toxic, you know, it's from trauma, hip hop's from trauma. And, you know, it could create some beautiful things, but then as we move on, it, should we hold on to some of that tradition of beef, like straight up beef, like, or, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. And that's not a question for me to answer. It's just I'm posing the question. You know what I mean? Hey, I'm on a podcast. Leave me alone. My bad, pro. So <clears throat> another thing to talk about, too, um, and my personal mindset is this is an intimate process, right? When we're trying to create an original style, right, original movement, an original pattern, um, you got to be very careful of being influenced, right? Because it's it's easy to subconsciously be influenced by something you see. That's why I never watch footage. I do now because I'm a I'm a student and of biomechanics. So for me, what I'm doing right now when I, when I do watch a lot of footage, I'm understanding where the scene is at in terms of uh, moving functional ultimately and. Yeah, you know, that's one of the reasons why I watch it now. But when I was competing heavy, I would be very careful of that because I wouldn't want to be influenced subconsciously by things. So that's another reason why somebody might not want to take a workshop. But again, like, Pro, what do you think? The uh, I know you've taught a good amount worldwide, you know, workshops. What's the value of it? And, and how do we stay away from these things that I listed? Um, so the challenges of... Well, it depends on the teacher. Um, some workshops just show choreography, right? They, sometimes some people show their whole set. Those workshops are okay. To me, the best workshops are where you, what you said, what Omar gave. Like, yo, he gave you a perspective that you were maybe used to or seeing. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think, I think for me, when I taught workshops, this. I just teach foundation as far as basic body mechanics and concepts of putting together stuff. And I'm, I'm going to just give a shout out to my man, B-Boy Bounce, 
uh, who kind of helped me create, uh, who helped create this style shadow rock. Um, it's based on what, like what's, what's a real forward pattern. And it's not just, uh, movement. It's the concept of an algorithm of, mm -hmm. uh, of what true patterns are. And I'm going to, I'm going to kind of go on my, my little, um, definition of a forward pattern, a forward pattern. You know, when people or B-boys and B-girls create forward patterns, they're not really creating patterns, they're creating combinations. The difference between a combination and a pattern is a co combination has a beginning and end. So it has a start and an ending. While algorithm, the transition, it starts in a transition and ends in transition. So I basically show this concept of that. And that's what's different. It gives you a different way of looking how your mind constructs mm. and puts stuff together. So, so, so I'm understanding this correctly, you're saying it starts with, let's, let's say a sweep is a transition. It'll start there and then you'll do some, some movements within it and it'll, it'll uh, return back to the same transition. Is that what you're saying? Or it doesn't have yes, to be? Yes, yes, yes. But I would say even, I would even say this for the style that we do, it starts in the, the transition starts on the other side with the same sweep. So if, then if we started clockwise, we'll end the transition counterclockwise and start it all over again, like an infinity. So that's the attitude of the, the philosophy. So I, that was more precious to the workshop than the actual patterns that I gave. It just opened people's minds because they already have their own ways of thinking. So mm -hmm. to me, a lot of people benefited from it. Uh, that style spread around the world. You know what I mean? Like it's that style that we do. It's like what? Australia, Singapore, Vietnam, Thailand, Taiwan, Japan, um, you know, all over the U.S., you know, uh, France, like, you know, and I've traveled and we, and it, it's not just, it wasn't just the style, it was the concept of something that you have already. It just opened your mind up. It was all, it's really math, really. Yo, and, we need to do an episode on this right here. I'll <laughs> if, if we could get, if we could get bounce on. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, that'd be dope. Think that the fine transitions, all this stuff needs to be defined so we can yeah. understand exactly. Yeah. But what you said right there, that, that already gave me a you know a new understanding about certain things as well. So it's right, very interesting. Right, yeah. We should unpack that one. Yeah, it's math, bro. Gearheads, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, but yo, so you know, like dude, we we don't even have to show clips, man. We're already like just kind of in it. Um let's do this. Uh let's start with Give me a second. Uh, let's start with one clip. All right. Let's start with uh, the first workshop that just happened. Give me a second. Uh, let's start with Yo, El Nino. Yeah, dude. Shout outs to Ronnie and Red Bull. There you go. On and offering it to the community, man. Yeah, man. Next there level. There you go. Yeah. So we're going to bring up. We're gonna bring up uh, Who we bring El up Nino, right? and El it, and you said he just it just happened this past this, weekend, yeah. this past weekend, right? Yeah. So let's talk about El Nino just a little bit, but before we do, where is that clip? <clears throat> Sorry about that. Well, El Nino from uh, Four, Four Lords and Boogie Brats, right? He's he's from the American Northeast, Boston, yeah. right? Yep. So, I mean, if you guys don't know Boogie Brats, and if you guys don't know Floor Lords, man. This, and this is where we first seen him. All right, we got Floor Lords. Event ever. Yeah, dude. Now look, okay. So here's the thing. This is the Jake first time we, the world has seen him. That's El Nino. <laughs> Bro. That got to be the, the sickest commando. Bro, yeah, 100. How are you going to pull this little explosive <laughs> machine out of a, a duffel bag and then go home? You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, that's I mean, crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, that man. was insane. That was insane. Yo, and he was doing tracks back then. What, Dude. what is it, like 11 maybe? Yeah, I remember him uh, 2003, I was in New York and I heard of him. Um, we were at the pier, I went to Rock Stay reunion and um, we went to the pier and I just remember him like, 
this tall to me. 11, wow, okay. You know what I mean? And he was just doing like sidestep top rock. And I was like, man, this kid got it. <laughs> Not to see him as an adult. It's kind of crazy to see him as an adult. Now we're going to uh, pull up his highlight clip right now. Yeah, so he was fortunate enough to grow up around, you know, Lino. Dude. And, you know, again. I mean, he's family, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. He's raised it. He's, you know, bred in it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what's crazy about El Nino. It's just, dude, like, he, he basically is from, like, he's from stock, man. He's from, you know, he's from, he's from, like, basically just. Oh, okay. Put on the volume now. Now I figure out the volume. Uh, he, he basically, it's family. It's family, you know what I'm saying? Let's watch this clip a little bit. What can you say about his mechanics? Man, I can say power flow. Let's just talk about the whole approach and the style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mechanics is core strength. Development and awareness is incredible. He has proficient upside down as he is right side up. And the way he's able to generate and maintain momentum allows him to look at that. Allows him to pop up and drop down to any level at, at whim. And this is all control. Boom, look at that. So look at his arm too, right? Yeah. His shoulder. Your arm really ends at. It's not right here. It's humorous. It really ends at your shoulder blade. And this guy has just that back and shoulder blade that allows him to do to get the height, to get the strength, to get the power, to get the punch into these power movements right here. Look, you can see when people have their arms like this and their neck is going down, their shoulder blades are highly developed. And that allows you to use your arms like leg. And that's what we see here with El Nino. That's crazy. Look at his torso. Ah! When your 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 torso, your your power cylinder right here, that is the center control of all movement. And El Nino got it. Describe that again. So like, because you know, like we didn't see you uh, when we were talking about it. Well, so we we're talking about how he's using his arms, right? He's doing air right. flares, he's doing hand works, right? Yeah. So his shoulder blades and his back and his lat is highly his whole like back structure and shoulder structure, upper body structure is highly developed. And because he was working at a young age, he made these adaptations early. So right. so his body has evolved to again use his upper body and arms as proficient. If not more dynamic than his legs, I, I've never seen him run. I don't know what his, if he has an athletic background, but he's been breaking for since he was a kid and up until now. This is uh, this is our battle against them at, at the Battle of the Year qualifiers. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but power cylinder, right? When we're saying torso, your your body. This is your your body. Your power cylinder is your body's core. That's where your spine is, right? Right. So that. And the muscles that surround and control your spine um, and your pelvis is it. That is the first principle of movement is it comes from right here. Controlling the spine, being able to, to create pressure right here in your, your abdomen, in your, your body's center. And yeah, if you think of it like a, like a battery, when this, when this is in check, force transmits up, uh, down, up and up down depending on where and how your body's oriented to the ground and we can see it with him with what he's doing crazy yeah shout out to uh floor lords man you know being raised flight lino lean ski flight, yeah, you know, right. that yeah it's, it's the family that raised him that you know that gave him his perspective shout out to boston massachusetts um Shout out to Float, their mentors, you know what I mean? Float, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. rest in peace, you know what I'm saying? Like, basically, incredible breakers. That's, you know, that's who, who floats from Sammy, Chino, and all those dudes. That's and, you know, he's, 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 you know, carrying tradition, you know what I'm saying? As far as, like, the Floor Lord style. But, yeah, what are you going to say, Jay? No, that's uh, incredible breakers. That's New York, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, Float used to always go to Boston, though. Okay. So that's yeah. the Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
their fam. So like that, you know, if you watch Float, obviously Float had a big influence on Kamel, big influence on El Nino. Um, but if you watch all the other Incredibles, like uh, Chino and Sammy, uh, you'll see, you know, that kind of like that, what you're talking about, that torque, that engine, that cylinder. They, like, they, they use force, right? It's all about momentum. You know what I'm saying? Small like, you can see that. Small movements from your spine equals big global movements. Mm. When you see do, people doing power, you see this right here. You see wings flying. Right. Created from a highly developed power cylinder. Crazy. I'm, I'm still trying to get used to that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to figure that out. Even at my age, guys. And like All I right. said, man, he's been doing it since he was young, so his body is built. Yeah. So we so we just talked about that workshop. So what's the next workshop that we have going on? What would you like to see from El Nino? Me if personally? Yeah. We're students. Let's put ourselves in, in a students. Um, okay. We're students. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying like, what would you want to learn from El Nino? If you went to his workshop, kind of uh, exactly what you're talking about, like. Yeah. How, uh, like how to um, generate that force? Like what's his setup? You know, the body mechanics of yeah, because it doesn't look like he has a big whip. Like you know, sometimes you see like some of the power move guys they have like a big setup, power move setup, or like spin drill setup. Yeah, it doesn't seem so much, but he's able to generate that much force and continue that momentum. So that's what I would try to learn from him. Uh, what about you, Jay? So, so the way you put it right there, a lot of the times it's not about one big set up like this but a combination of micro setups and micro rotations specifically with power um it's coiling mechanics positioning your body ahead of itself in a curved path no matter which way you turn if when you rotate your body it could be at the spine like this it could be at the shoulders it could be at the hips and it's a combination most times of it all boom that right there creates tension in your body to either continue going that way or uh, maintaining momentum or going the opposite way, basically. Right, right. So the intelligence for him, it's he understands how to tilt his body really quick so he, he can get set to, he sets his rotational axis really fast. And yeah, the micro rotations that he has and the micro adjustments that he's able to do. Crazy. Dude, yep. that's why you're on this show, man, because I couldn't see that. <laughs> yeah, man, look, look at it. He doesn't, he doesn't, he's not like, ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm out here trying to do that and hurting myself. Like, <laughs> no, it really comes, the energy is generated in the beginning, really from the top rock, which is a good segue into our next. Uh, All right. Good segue, man. Good segue. That was an excellent segue, by the way. Bro, I mean, if you're just doing the, the front cross step, or some people call it the Indian step, yeah, that's, that was my staple step right there. And when I'm talking, I came from the the electric funk, the Africa, the soul sonic force era. Yeah, yeah. Boom. I'm just I'm just hitting, I'm stabbing into the ground and I'm getting that force and the, the sonic the music, the sonic frequency. Yeah. It's charging that's my body the, up. That's the thing. So sometimes I'll just stab and I'll just do this until my I feel charged up. Right. And most times we hope we don't get I'll shut up now because here it is. Sorry. Yeah. We got B boy. Why not? Yo, B boy. Why not? Coming from uh, representing New Jersey. So this is a clip that actually made him popular. Even though we talked earlier off camera and backstage, we talked about Mighty Four being the first time he really like. I think everyone's seen him in a competition back in oh, 2007. Yeah. This is 2009, mm. and this is in Sweden uh, called Street Star. Seven to Smoke Top Rock, and this is, yeah, this is where he got his, you know, his claim of fame. This is a uh, Taiwan. He just does a whole thing. Let's watch this in real quick. Try not worry about the copyright laws. Let's watch this. Pay attention to his head and his shoulders, right? If he's gonna look at the feet, the feet is incredible, but. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
All right, let me put down the volume a little bit just for copyright sake. But yeah, you can tell like he's in the music, man. Um, Haley from New Jersey. Uh, his original crew rock with finesse. Then he became rock steady. Student of uh, Mr. Wiggles, Frosty Freeze, and uh, you know admirer of uh, of uh, of uh, Pee Wee Dance. We talked about that. Uh, what can you what, what what's your things about why not? Man, well, this this guy. I mean, he's the most probably the most qualified educator in the scene right now. And let me tell you why, bro. Not only is he in the college um, arena, right, teaching and implement, designing and implementing a curriculum, and he's been doing so for five years. So he's highly systematized and organized, right? So he brings the architecture. Uh, he brings a, a very holistic approach to what he's teaching as well. Uh, from, from architecture, sound design, he's a producer, right? So he's bringing all these things in and he, he's teaching hip hop, he's teaching dance. He's teaching all these things. Uh, and on top of that, he is from Jersey, which is right by New York. And he is in Rocksteady Crew. Who Rocksteady, what we know is they were some of the, the, the biggest influences worldwide teaching about it. Now, whether yeah. or not what we're finding out is, you know, a lot of things, new information's coming out. Yeah. But big ups to Rocksteady and their campaign. 100. I came up on that and I learned the basics from them. And it was panels jam battle ciphers right. that, that was the the atmosphere and of a jam when i when i came up and there was all the elements as well yeah um, so let's put that out there right so so why not this is a workshop that everybody wants to take i want to take this workshop bad and i talked to him i had his number and i call him and, and he's he's such a cool guy such a humble yeah you're guy. just you're, you're literally at his house we're doing a we're doing a gearheads podcast at his house you know you're at his house and we got to interview him i got to kick it with him we did a we did a malaysian tour together about mm -hmm. uh 11 years ago yeah. we were both in malaysia we went to different cities out there and i'll say like you know he was the one like even though um there was guys in the scene that brought dance the dance back into breaking which would be to me i would see remind abstract of course came out the machine but why not was the one to break it down break it down like showing how there can be a popping influence there can be a locking influence there can be hip-hop dance but then make it look seamless and still in the flavor of top rock and breaking Right, it didn't go too far off. It doesn't look like all styles. It looks like top rock, but the approach is all styles. Do you know what I mean? Like that's the approach, but it doesn't look like it. You know what and I'm you saying? Know, you know what it is too, because he can do all style battles, and he's doing non break. He's doing like, uh, like trap stuff, and he's top rock into it. And I want to, I want to know how to, because me, I've been dabbling with that too, and I'm like, oh, I gotta learn house, and I gotta learn this, because I want to, like personally. I love the music, so I want to know how to max and groove to it. But he's able to do so with top rocking. So paying attention to his foundation is big, right? Right. Um. So crazy. Let's talk about his mechanics. Yeah, right? let's talk about it a little bit. So this guy tripled down on the on human the human biological blueprint, which is we are bipedal, which means we walk like this, right? We have a spine. We have a pelvis, and the pelvis moves our legs in a line like this right here. And look at his top rocks, his footwork. It, it opens up when he's doing his grooves and stuff like that, but he he's able to keep this within proximity of how our bodies, our human bodies, are meant to design. That's why he's always in balance to rebound, to level change, and ultimately improvise. He's mm -hmm. always within a millimeter or a millisecond of uh, hitting something that's coming up or setting something up to where right. you don't expect it. And what we've seen in that last clip is he's able to do that. Not, not only is he, does he tie in the grooves, right, which is important to have that before you improv, right? His grooves are all there. His foundation is so sound. But he's able to set it up to where, if you've seen, he got a blow up from hitting his finger on the beat on that, 
or whatever the sound was. Yeah, cowbell. And it, yeah, it, it just everybody blew up. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, and this is this is the like the whole thing of being like, you know, it doesn't have to always be so complex. If you could execute it simply, sometimes that says enough. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He does have a he does study boxing as well. You right. know, one of my past interviews with him. Check it out at the BTR Breaking um, my YouTube channel. We we have a, a interview with Why Not. Um, he was talking about that Gusty Amato. Yeah. How the the peekaboo style. The peekaboo style, yeah. Wow. So what I was saying, you watch. Shout out to Mike Tyson. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, he said shoulder and head like big time, like popping up, and also yeah. the way his his inflection on mm -hmm. the steps towards his opponent, and and you can see it in those are showcases right there. But if you watch his battle, he's coming up to the guy, boom, boom, and he's he's never square like this. He's like, right, 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 right. You know what I mean? Oh shoot! Two levels. Oh, I never noticed that. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, pull up the culture shock and any any of the the battles like that. The way he's stabbing is like he's jabbing, and the way he's setting things up like that. Right. Head, upper body. It's hard to do. He pointed yeah. it out to me, and I, I try to implement it a little more, like level change with my head. But to do right. that with my footsteps. Right. It, it's it's just a next level. Pick up pickable style footwork is a little bit different, and like yeah. Uh, me and my boy, uh, my boy Greg studies that, and oh, uh, it's pretty dope. It shifts. It's it's so elusive. What's footwork dope with martial yeah. arts or footwork with dancing? Footwork with the peekaboo style in with boxing. Martial arts. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's pretty dope, but it's all related. You know what I mean? It's still body mechanics. It's still it's elusive. Yeah. The peekaboo style is very elusive. So dope, what are you doing when you do when I say balance, right? There's a con when you see somebody boxing, right? Or, or Ken, right? From Street Fighter, right? The Ken, he, he's doing this right here, right? His body is always, it's kind of like a like a gyration, like a circle, like this, right? He's keeping a bend at the knees and he's going like yeah. this. You can't really see it with this footage, but no, nah, but I mean, if you like, get when it, he's you like get this, it. just by doing this, you're plugging your core in. So, right. so when your body's always going like this, you're pressurizing your core. And what we just spoke about earlier. Is when you have that in check, boom, that's where power comes from. Right. And power is superordinate or it, it's it's basically synonymous with speed. And when okay, and when when uh when is this workshop at district with, with why not? Um we gotta pull the dates up on that. But you know what? Let's put it in the description. Let, let's put okay. let, let's go all right. and, uh, put all the details like that in the description. Because you know, you're you're talking about uh you know, when you're when you're when you're in that position, you're plugging in to your core, yeah. right? And you're basically accessing power. Now we talk sure? about this next person talking about power. Okay, who we got? <laughs> who we got? We got the man. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing because it's just so funny. Talk about power. We don't even know this guy's age. Power? <laughs> All right, let's talk about power. We're talking. If we're gonna talk power, let's talk about B Boy Ivan, the urban action figure. Let's go. If you guys don't know Holy about Holy crap! Look at this. His name is just enough to man the urban action figure. Look at oh this. my god. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> if humanity is to move forward into the future as a species, we need to find a source of sustainable energy. Right. Ivan, the urban action figure, is this source of energy. Look at this guy right here. Boom. What the hell? <laughs> the models. When you know you have power, when you're rotating like this and keeping it at a level and you're not going like this, yeah. you know you have power. That's Ivan. Yeah, dude. Look, 1994. Oh, man. Yeah, I wasn't breaking here. He's already on a certain level. I was in fourth grade right here. Oh, shoot. Oh, I've never seen this footage. Yeah. So he was really good at tumbling. The story what I have with Ivan is I, I met him or seen him back in 1992. We used to call him Flip Man. Because he could just flip. 
right? Obviously, yeah. look, it could just flip. But um, the thing that, like, you know, the thing that uh, that I found out is that uh, he basically, what you call it? He uh, he learned from Lil Caesar in them, and oh, that's really? who, who gave him like his his the power that we know now. Added with his natural ability of just talking about cylinder, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, with him, I want to talk about when you say flip. Now we're talking about his just the his lower body to be able to do his total body integration. When we're talking about the ultimate athlete, artist right. athlete, we're talking about Ivan, the urban action figure right here. Yeah, right. he can flip, but he can also spin, orbit, and run. Right. Can you, uh, can you break that down just a little bit? I mean, everything we just said, man. I mean, like, to be able to – it makes sense when you say he has a background with uh, with Little Caesar, right? Yeah. Like, so the story is that, you know, he's in Modesto, Central Valley, California. And then um, I knew – I saw him as Flip Man. You know, he didn't really have the power like that. Um. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, maybe around 95, 96, we started to see him around. I guess maybe he was in Vegas by that time, going back and forth from Modesto and Vegas and L.A. And I think they sharpened up Ivan. It was like Caesar and them sharpened up Ivan and his power moves. Mm -hmm. And then that's where you see the Ivan that we're like, oh, shit. You know what I mean? I mean, biomechanically, if, if we're to just look at him, right, we, I've seen him dance all throughout my career for sure, but – He's compact, right? Right. So gravity favors him off the bat. Yeah. It seems like he has a shorter torso. People with shorter torsos, they have less spine to have to control. So that's mm -hmm. in his favor as well. But but I don't know. I mean, he's, he's always wearing kind of like uh, covered clothes from what right. I see him. Um, but again, he can flip. He can spin. He can orbit. He can do a combo of it all. He can change levels, direction on a dime with force and with power that nobody can match and nobody probably ever could match him um, or has yet. Nobody has yet. Yeah. But the true source and thing to point out about his power is this guy operates on love. Now I'm not getting soft on you, bro. When I say love, he loves the music. Yeah. So if you ever see him in a cypher. Oh yeah. Getting down. I seen him in KML, and, and I think KML is a Michael Jordan. You know, I don't know if that's argued by anybody, but I seen them going and, dude, you can't match his energy, man. Yeah. And that comes from loving it. Yeah. Loving the culture. Yeah. Loving the music. So yeah. Right there, that, that's one thing that you gotta point out about Ivan. Yeah. Dude, that's real. I mean, I did a camp with him. Like I didn't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't sleep, dude. <laughs> He didn't sleep. He was just, dude, he's like an energy, he's like Wolverine, like, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? The comic book Wolverine, like short stocky, like always ready to go. Then he'll be gone for a day. But he's like hibernating. He's like a bear, bro. Yo, and, and just talk to him. Yeah, right? <laughs> if you want anything, just talk to him, man. And here, here, the way he explains anything, the way he, his energy, the way he loves life. And you see it. He's the ultimate MC in our culture right here, man. That's real. Like, now he's, like, the B-Boys host, right? He always oh, gets – dude, oh, he's the first one I know that did the reverb, like, freestyle session, 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 session. Yeah, 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 that stuff. <laughs> or or uh, what's the other one he says? Uh, Take your time, but hurry up. <laughs> He has, he has, like, proverbials and sayings all day. On the Dude, floor. put that on his shirt, right? Like, that's his thing. Like, put that on his shirt. We can put that on his shirt. Like, Yeah, man. Um, he's a good hangout, too. Like, for real. Like, if I were to, like, hang out with, like, yo. I don't know if I could catch up. I think he's older than me, even though he doesn't want to say it. I think he's older than me. But I, I, I can't catch up with that dude, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, dude, um, yeah, B-Boy Ivan, man. You can check him out. Check out his uh, Urban Act, Ivan the Urban Action figure. You can check out YouTube, that clip. Dude, his his solo videos back in the day were just kind of, like, insane. Like, bro. insane, bro. So so if you went to his workshop, what would you like to take away? I took his workshop. I went to I went to the camp. 
I was in the camp with him. Um, How was it? He's really good with kids. You know what I mean? He's really good because the camp was mostly kids. Like my workshop was a little bit over the, everyone's heads as for a kid. Because it was kids, I had to keep it yeah. a little more simple. So for him, he breaks it down to kids well. Like he'll like, you know, show them how to do a setup, setup for power, stuff like that. Not so scientifically explained, but more just feeling based, more intuitive. You know what I'm saying? So it's, uh, it's pretty on point because he's an MC. He can talk to, it sounds like a wide uh, range, you know, demographic. Yeah. So for me, I want to hear about stories, man. That's what I would like. That's the knowledge I would want to get from Ivan. It's not so much the, the, um, the actual breaking. Mm -hmm. I'm like, even if you can't like ask for there to be a session in the end, like maybe like if the workshop's an hour long, then maybe ask him to do 45 minutes of the workshop of 15 minutes. Like let's just kind of play around and he'll come and help you out and try this and try Like, I think Ivan's really good at that. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Stuff I'm like that, like a session. <clears throat> How about you? What would uh, you want to learn? I would love to take his workshop. Yeah. Um, I would what what I would want to ask him or what I would want to learn. Because what, what would you want to learn? Um, I guess Ivan Halos. If I were to you know think oh. about it, it's hard to tell because again, like I'd want to learn dancing from him because he got groove. He does like night yeah. like yeah. New Jack Swing, like one hundred. Like, He's from that foundation for sure. That in. I'd like yeah. to know the creative process. Like, hey, you know, like how do you how do you mix it in? Um, how how do you like? What's your advice on trying to get athletic mm. to move powerful to be in control at all times? And, right. and probably a, a combination of genetics. And I don't know if he has a a sport background. I want yeah, to know he does. playing sports. You know, with with this, he has a sports um, background for sure. Yeah. All types of sports, too. Like, uh, he was part of an uh, after-school program. He started an after-school program. And the name of the after-school program is called Style Elements. Oh, word. Is he, he's Style Elements, right? He started it. That was the name of the program. It was oh. Style Elements. Oh, he started Style Elements. The program. The after-school pro program called Style Elements. Okay. And then that became Style Elements. <laughs> Mm. Separate from him. You know mm. what I mean? That's where everyone uh, met up. Uh, Crumb is for mine. Dope, man. Pretty crazy story. Yeah. But you could ask him himself at the workshop. <laughs> That's right. Who's next, bro? All right. Now, the next B-boy. Okay, here's the thing, man. And I, you know, this is no disrespect to anyone, you know, out there. But, bro, the guy that got the first well, the first publicized 100 wins was Rock's right. But the actual person who got the first 100 wins was actually our next person up on the lineup of the uh, workshops is E-Boy Morris. 100 wins? Is that documented? Yep. You got receipts for that? Yep, he got receipts. I believe, man. You know, the he first got receipts. Time, so... Even though Rock's right, uh, Rock's right uh, basically had a hundred publicized. You know, it was Morris who had the first hundred, and Morris I've been knowing was Morris since two thousand four. You know, uh, North, Northern Cal, uh, NorCal, uh, uh, B boy that I've been knowing, and um, yeah, he learned from a lot of the guys from Flex Play, uh, especially. Uh, my dude Ajax, one of my one of my boys, and you could tell a little bit of the influence. But then uh, started to go on his own. Now part of Rock Force crew. Um, I would say that he really concentrated on the battle. Holy crap, that was crazy! <laughs> he really concentrated on battling. Like if I could say, if there's anyone that likes to battle, it's Morris. He lives for the battle. Uh, what can you say about Morris? 
Man, the first time I seen Morris was him. It was an exhibition. I was, I was going to the Bay a lot, actually. It was at Cell Space, him and Speedy. And I knew Speedy at the time. I didn't know Morris that well. And I was thinking, oh, man, because Speedy was just blowing up. I, was right. like, oh, I don't know who this is, but Speedy's going to light this guy up. Right. Contrarily, Morris just, Morris lit him up, bro. Morris got him good. Outbattled him. Man, just blew it up. Because his energy is high, too. You know, yeah, what man. He's highly dynamic. He adds flips in what he's doing. Um, and he has these long limbs. So people with lengthy limbs, there's usually a little bit of body lag, right? Morris doesn't have body lag. Who's he battling right there? <laughs> <laughs> um, Again, like I said, you know what I mean? Like, battler. Like, yeah, this, guy yeah. likes, this guy likes to battle. You know what I mean? That's his thing is to battle. I think, you know, like, yeah, we know that he does the flare elbow tip. We know that, you know, he has high flips, but what he's really known for is like getting in people's faces and just going for it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah. He moves good. He's, uh, he has good mobility in the frontal plane, which is basically the side of your body. And we see it with his flares, right? He's able to open his legs really wide. Right, we're talking about how why not moves like this, right? The sagittal plane, yeah, down on, on the human biology, which is walking like this, yeah. But obviously, yeah. we get to another uh, just insane level, right? But Morris, yeah, I mean, he can do this and he can do that as well, right? And again, he has these limbs when he's doing these moves right here. If a shorter guy was doing it, it wouldn't look as clean and as impressive. and Again, let's talk about intelligence and spatial awareness, right? He's always looking or returning his vision, aka his intention and direction of what he's doing towards his opponent. So on an intelligence level, I mean, he's, he's, he's one of the smartest ones as far as spatial intelligence and context with what he's doing. Boom. <laughs> I mean, he's just talking. His, everything looks easy and effortless, right? Yeah. Uh, disciplined dude. Um, so as far as a workshop, if you were to take a workshop from, uh, Morris, what would, uh, what would you want to learn from Morris? I mean, I'd like to get into his mind about how he battles and how maybe he prepares. Cause what we see when, when you're setting up burns and burning people, um, a lot of the times, like how, how do you do that? And then keep keep in the, uh, the mindset of, of what you're doing with your round and not get caught up with that. So there's a little bit of detachment with what he's doing that enables him, I think, from you know the emotions of, okay, I'm insulting you right now. So are you gonna, you know, are you gonna fight or flight? Or are you gonna remain calm and execute, right? Yeah. And, and yeah. trip down on what you're doing. And not a lot of people are able to do that. They're not able to truly and and maybe you can break down the uh, what was it the dark triad you were talking about? <laughs> yeah. So, yes, the dark triad. Yeah. Let me. Uh, the dark triad is uh, Machiavellianism. Um, mispronounced. I'm butchering. Machiavellian, like Machiavelli. Yeah. Machiavellianism. Yeah. Narcissism, and uh, psychopathy. Uh, so all very selfish type of like traits in the human. Uh like Trump would definitely be like dark triad. Most um, most executives and CEOs are dark triad because they'll get the job done, right? They don't care what they have to do. They have, they have to like, you know, promise something they can't all the time, they'll do it. You know what I mean? Um, it, could, it could be a bad thing in relationship, but it could be a good thing as far as giving you drive to go forward. You know what I'm saying? So, and a lot of people have <laughs> a lot of people have dark triad traits. You know what I'm saying? For um, sure. You know what I mean? And I, for me, what I would like to learn from, learn from a workshop from him is probably that, the same thing. Kind of like, how do you stay calm? How would you stay calm in a high-pressure situation? Um, here, let me pull this out. <laughs> this is crazy. Yo, we, have, uh, we have Roman right here. He asked, uh, 
He said to talk about Bushido. Bushido. Give it give me a second. So uh we'll talk about Bushido after we uh go through the last uh workshops. Okay, cool, yeah. Yeah. But I'm about to pull up uh Morris versus Lilu. Oh man. This yeah. is this is the one where it's like Wait, it bounced so many times. Which is the one that was ridiculous, though? I mean, I'm, I'm looking this up, but yeah. There's this one where uh, the disrespect was freaking real, and there's no way that this could happen. Yeah. In, in, in these times. This was... Uh, <laughs> I, I know exactly what battle... It was in a mall, wasn't it? I know what battle you're pulling up. Uh... I hope this is the one. I can't find it. I might have to let it go. But uh Yo, he's I mean, again, Morris, he moves good and he's always in control. And and a right. good way to quantify or kind of observe that in somebody is musicality. Right. He hits music, he he sets it up and they'll hit his freeze at the right moment and do it so clean and the timing of it and the setup, you know. Yeah. Most times it's kind of simple. Again, like a lot of the things he's doing is pretty straightforward. Flare and he'll stab. A lot of the things are based off the stab and the flare for him. He moves well with his footwork as well. He works the entire circle. And again, he's always looking at the guy, right? Yeah, it's – I'm trying to find this clip, man. It's kind of hard because I should have planned it, but then we're... I know we have like two more, so – you want to talk about it real quick, or you just want to jump into the next two because we still got to review the uh... the Red Bull, uh, so, which you call it. Yeah. So yeah, so I'll just talk about it real quick. I want to, you know, me. I like to show, not tell. But as far as um, as far as uh, that clip, it's basically them throwing their shoes at each other. <laughs> like like who's Lilu and Morris are literally throwing shoes at each other. Like it gets really disrespectful, and it can't. It doesn't fly. It will not fly at this moment. But it was the craziest thing I ever seen in my life. Like it, it's like it might as well have been a fight. But the fact that it wasn't a fight and it was shoes, like it was like. So they they stuck by code, right? They're like, hold on, we're gonna do everything not fighting, and we're gonna take it as far as we can, and we're gonna see who can take yeah. it. Yeah and who's going to back down first and nobody was backing down. As well. No, like, and it was pure drama entertainment. It was WWE in that motherfucker, man. Oh, my gosh, man. It was fucking funny as fuck. Next. It was funny. As fuck. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, it's like, how do you how do you keep calm in that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how do you keep calm in that? All right. Okay, I got the finals ready for there. Okay, so next workshop. All right, so as far as uh, this B girl, um, I actually know her from Beat Freaks, um, which they were on the America's Best Dance Crew. Um, she does a lot of uh, industry work. I think within the last maybe four or five years, she started doing uh, competi more competitions uh, as far as like one on ones and all styles, and slowly even more uh basically more even more ego competitions and she's actually been doing really good for the breaking for gold so the person that i'm talking about is b girl rascal randy so let's just take a clip of her movements rascal randy is dope oh so Beat Freaks, uh, Bonita was in that, huh? Yeah. I, I wonder if you know, it's a mic. Check it. Check it. Check it. Pretty strong upper, uh, upper body and lower body. The way she's able to pick up and transition from forward to standing up and resetting. That's very that's a lower body compound movement, right? She's good with that. She moves on her hands well. Also. 
smooth. Okay. I like a, I like a nice chair. A nice chair for you. It's so Same. overlooked. Dude, 100. My chair is so so. Oh, she got nails too. Yo, she got good lead leg mobility. And mobility is like flexibility and control and strength, basically. A lot of people, they default on the lead leg with their mills. Um, so, yeah, she looks pretty strong. Yeah. She so she strong. already she already has a workshop series. I believe it's called Omega Flow. And she basically, uh, it works as like kind of like slower movements and trying to find your creative space in there. So it's less of a... It's more like if I were to, I, I mean, I might be not doing it justice by describing it like this, but it's more kind of a modern dance approach to finding movement. Everything kind of slower, finding your mobility that way, like kind of moving like more circular, like this motion. I'm, I might be butchering it, but like I've seen a B-Girl Mel from San Diego from okay, Florida. Mel. Shout out to Mel. Yeah, she yeah. takes workshops from Rascal Randy. Nice. And like I've seen her kind of, the same thing, kind of like just moving. So you get, you get to know your body through like a proprioception of slower type things. So that's, I think that's Omega flow movement, I believe. I'm butchering it, sorry, Randy, but that's, I think what she's going to be teaching in her workshop. So what do you think so far as uh, of that clip and uh, her approach to teaching? Well, what you said right there is interesting, right? Like how, how she... She uses the concept and, and exercise and practice of moving slow for space, right? For space to kind of, uh, it's really what improv is based off, right? Having space and understanding right. the space so well. Right. And you can deviate for a second and you can come back to it and whatnot. So that's really cool. I, I like that concept a lot. Um, I wonder how that's going for her with that and, and what exactly she does. Yeah, and I believe it's popular. I believe her classes are popular online word but I, i'm pretty sure that you could probably get more obviously in person right like, yeah yeah absolutely again there's, there's nothing that compares to it um no like i was saying she moves good and the fact that she hit a clean chair yeah not already you know that, that gets my respect big time a lot of people they default their leg uh their neck goes like this their arm is slipped off here it, is, it isn't straight stacked over your pelvis right here so, so all those things make make a difference, right? Because you want to create that arch. It should look like a head bridge. That's kind of the global mechanics. If you're you're looking, stop at making it. fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> mobility, you need mobility. Like this. Yeah, yeah. Kind of the, you know what I mean. So I need to work on it. I really do because I'd be doing that too. Yeah, yeah. Same. You know, it's just things. Again, in breaking, generally we're we're, we're anterior or front of the body down. Right. Our our posteriors aren't that great. So. Um, if your style doesn't include chair freezes and hollow backs and, um, you know, those are kind of the main ones I can think of off the top of my head. You need to do accessory movements. Bridges is a perfect one for that. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm working on that. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I, I got to get on your level, actually. I see some of the stuff you'd be doing. Props on that, man. Um, Eventually. it will get there. it will get there. <laughs> yeah, but that nice chair, man, that says a lot. She probably had a really good teacher or she's just smart and understood. And she's seen it one time. She's yeah. Like, oh. I, I think she, you know, I think she definitely, um, she sessions with flow master wicked. If I do believe, ah, there I, think, you go. I think, I think, I think that's like, you know, basically like mm -hmm. the tribe that's around her when she was yeah. coming up. Wicked so. got those clean, nice freezes, man. Yeah, um, man. So again, like, like I was telling you earlier, like I never really seen her around it. I, I don't know her all that well. But just from seeing that clip, um, it doesn't seem like she has – it makes sense that she has a choreo background and maybe kind of stepped into breaking recently because she doesn't have foot patterns in that clip. Right. Um, but, again, she moves well on her hands. She has good leg strength, which tells me she has good overall strength balance. Right. It's like that. How she went full work and she stood back up and the speed and, and uh, intention and intact, uh, attack on it. That's a lower body compound movement. When you see people do that a lot, we don't see that in, in B-boys and breakers. We're upper body dominant and we're weak on the legs and, and we rely on our upper body. And Very true. And there's to that, right? You see a lot of people quitting early. It's super yeah. important to balance out the upper and lower body. So we see that with her. I don't know how, I wonder how old she is, right? And how long she's been that. Yeah, I don't know how old she is either. Because if she's kind of newer, if you say five years, that's pretty new. 
in yeah. the scene. I'm sure she's been. Cause yeah, I think she's been uh, dancing for a long time. I just don't know. Like I said, like, I know I've seen her around, but up until recently, maybe she battled more in LA. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like early 2000s, maybe she battled more there. Yeah. But I start seeing her in the Bay Area and whatnot, like within the last five years. So, so one of the one of the dope things about females is they ask guys do females they do, but they ask questions. Yeah, guess, girls are straight up; they're more intelligent than we are, man. <laughs> to be honest, and yeah. that in itself would make me interested in taking her workshop. Just yeah, so her girls learn quicker. That's why I notice all the girls that when I teach girls, they get breaking quicker than the guys do. Mm -hmm. They ask less, like. They ask the right questions more than the small talk. So that that's that's another uh, a way to quantify intelligence is how to ask the right questions. Because if you can ask the right questions, you can find anything out and learn anything on Google. Right. You just gotta know what to ask, right? Right, so, right. So yeah, I agree. I agree. In general, that's what makes me interested in that. And the fact that she has a choreo and industry working background. Yeah. I'd love to see what type of drills that she, she probably does preventative a lot of. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 I'm pretty sure too. Yeah. Stuff. So I'd be interested in that. Yeah. Dope. All right. So let's get to the last workshop. My man, all the way from Who we got? Venezuela, representing Speedy Angels. We got my dude. Little G, the man who can fly. The man. Let's go. Our wingy speedy angels moving fast and flying. Yeah, and of course representing Red Bull uh, BC1 All Stars. Yep, I think he's Super Crew as well. Yeah, Super Crew. Now let's just watch him fly, man. Let's just watch him fly, buddy. Yeah, I mean that's kind of what you'd want to. Man. One arm. What the hell? Too much. Back to one hand. Back to much. One hand. Holy crap. What the hell, dude? I would see his style change a little bit. This is a little bit older clip, but then I don't think anyone has still basically has done his his uh his stuff yet. You know what I mean? Some of his combinations that he came up with. Oh man, and, and the control and what endurance too. Right? Look at that, right? like how he stops. His genius is, is within that right there, right? He doesn't have very, he doesn't have footwork. I mean, right. He might. He doesn't do it though, right? Yeah, uh, he doesn't. He doesn't really concentrate on it. Maybe, maybe now. Maybe he'll concentrate a little bit more now. I think he'll he concentrate on the dance and the top rock a little bit more than now. But I know that he does triple down on his strength, right? Holy crap! Holy crap! <laughs> but when I say when I say B boys are flexion, that means their body bones proximating or coming close to each other. So think of like a fetal position, right? That's that's extreme flexion, like a cannonball. Um, it's easier, I believe, for humans to contract force, aka tense in your muscles, right? In a ball like this, he's contracting force extended. So, so for me, that's another level of strength, and it's 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 further away, I believe. You know, especially when he's opening his legs in abduction, right away from your midline, the straddle, and contracting force and whipping and turning like that. That that's that's an evolved. This, this is an evolution of the human biological blueprint of moving in locomotion from point A to point B linearly, right? So with that, I mean, you got to point out his upper body and his shoulders and what he's doing with that. And what makes it light is obviously what we identified is having the core pressurized the right way. And his, his glute, his glute meads and his ITs and, and his, his body's abductors being able to hold it open while rotating. Pro, pro I can't hear you. Crazy, crazy. Yeah, yeah, there you are. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I think because of that, I'd like to see him do footwork. I, I'm curious. I feel like a lot of people who powerheads, we see it when they try and do footwork, it looks bow legged, and it's hard for them to 
to move fast and and be really intelligent with the space in footsteps. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, it'll be very interesting to me. It'll be very. What the hell's going on? Yeah. Okay. I was lagging for a second. Now it'll be very interesting to me to see that because uh, you know, the thing with uh, a lot of the Paramount guys, I think, because the weight's a little bit different. You know, uh, to me, footwork is a uh, like, you know, with power, you still have momentum going from left to right if you're going clockwise, right to left if you're going counterclockwise. But with uh, with with footwork, it's like, it's not this. It's hold, and you're rotating. You know what I mean? Your body rotates over that pillar, then it rotates off the other pillar. Or, like, you're basically carrying your weight versus, like, momentum carrying your weight. You don't have that centrifugal force so much to kind of like pull you like a windmill. You know what I'm saying? Uh, maybe you have a better explanation about that, Jay. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, why do you think? Why do you think uh, uh, a lot of power move guys have like heavy footwork? Um, they're not under themselves. Mm. It's again, again, it's it's evolved away from the human biological blueprint, which is. My feet is supporting my my center of mass, my body's mass, which is generally right here, right? Uh -huh. When you're opening your legs out like this right here, which is the the strength and evolution of a power head right here, it, it, it kind of forms their muscles. The way we move shapes our body. So if he's predominantly moving like that, his body's gonna be strong moving like this kind of like a bird flying. So when we say he's flying, he's literally flying, right? And his, his body's mechanics is suited towards that. As opposed to a why not where it's like this, you can't see, but just think walking, right? Um, so so did I answer your question as to why it's hard for-, for Yeah, 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 yeah. Because they don't know how to step under themselves. They don't know how to support their body. When they do footwork, their hands, or that their, their uh, rotational point of access is right here and their feet is right here. A footwork person distributes the, the balance, the, the distance is a lot shorter between the, right. and the feet and right. they can access height with it. And okay. Move better because they keep it closer like this. Right. And, yeah, I mean, playing to principles of hard science of physics, right? You, you want your 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 uh, base of support closer like this underneath your center of mass. So when it's further apart away from your body's center, your body's heaviest point, right? It's a long isometric contraction of your body. That basically means you got to work harder as opposed to relying on your body's uh, structure and stack. I mean, that makes sense for me because with footwork, I do feel that, but with power, I don't, I don't feel the other thing, the, uh, the elongation of, anything like i'm so used to like centering the core so much but mm -hmm. i lose the you know that that feeling of just the flying like i'm trying to like so i'm the opposite of yeah you know i mean like I, I keep it too in you know what i'm saying versus like power moves they they let it out i keep it too in or they don't know how to bring it in so it's like it's a lot of deep programming bro <laughs> like basically so what they're doing they're, they look they look light wouldn't you say pro yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Little G looks light when he's upside down doing 90s, doing air flares, right? Yeah. He knows how to pressurize his body from the point of contact, from the hand, all the way up the kinetic chain, all the way up in here. And, and we'll talk cross body slings, right? Right. This is a kinetic line. Don't mind this dark spot right here. Okay? <laughs> That's his dark spot. Okay. <laughs> and it goes straight into their core and into their lower body. When you have the entire chain, pressurized your body becomes light and when your body becomes light you have freedom in movement and that's what we're seeing right here and it sounds easier than what it is but typically it's hard for us to generate force uh in over overhead inverted overhead like that and and certain moves like like back spins and mills it's the same concept but we're connecting it to our body's torso not necessarily our hands but hips core to hips and it's the way you pressurize it right it's when we, we talk core it's not just your rectus ab ab abdominis it's not just your six eight four two one pack you know 
It's your transverse. It's the belt that wraps around the front of your body right here and your pelvic uh, floor. Like all that yeah. muscles, that's that's where you can lighten and really, really get the deep connection into your lower body. And that's what you need when you're doing all that. So he understands that. I'd be interested if I'm taking his uh, workshop, I'd be interested in asking him, like, how did you develop that? How did you become light and how was it easy? Do you have drills that could help? Right. You? Yeah. Like, um, yeah. What do you rotate and what is the timing of your, your rotation? What right. are the rotational constructs and segments for when you're doing this? Yeah. Fair enough, man. I would honestly, I would ask the same thing because actually, Jay, this whole conversation has already made me think is like, yeah, that's how I do approach footwork. It does feel like it's centered. Oh, uh, power moves feel like. It's out there somewhere. Yeah. So what you're talking about, I can relate with. Um, and yeah, doing a, doing a workshop and having drills to kind of explore that would definitely give me the proprioception to figure it out, right? Because I understand what the move, pattern recognition, I see the move. Proprioception of it is blind to me still. Some moves are very blind to me, you know what I mean? As far as feeling, yeah. right? So it'd be dope to kind of like, if he had drills to kind of like, get those feelings in into my muscle memory i love drills man yeah man honestly i mean we, we can try and formulate an idea on how it feels and how to do it from how it looks but oftentimes it's very far from the reality of it right and you know certain moves i, I the first time i like baby, baby mills i already had regular mills the first time i seen it i was like let me try that and i got it thank goodness but but again that's not the case for a lot of moves and air flares especially um, but with certain moves, most times it's one tweak, one activation from it clicking like that. So, so having the right drills, so you're, you're, you're training like these moves in the most efficient and effective way to where you're not, uh, compromising your body and developing yeah. bad habits as well. Right. Crazy. That's dope though. So that was the workshop series that they're going to have a district. Uh, started this weekend with El Nino. It's ending with uh, Little G oh, in yeah. October. So you can ch uh, check them out. Check out uh, District on their uh, District Arts and IG or on their website, and we'll have the uh, we'll have the links in the description below. So you can check out and maybe if you're in the Vegas area, you know you're in the seven seven hundred two area. You get to take these workshops, right? And are they are they are they free? I forget if they were free. Or not. Um, I I believe if it's not free, I, I know the first two were free. Okay, uh, I gotta check into that. I I don't want right. to. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. Wanna, we'll, I don't we'll, we'll we'll have all that together with that. All right. So uh, yeah, that that was the whole section about workshops. We did about damn an hour and eighteen about workshops. <laughs> yeah, right, we got into a bunch of other things too. Um, it was dope because we went, we we got very descriptive as far as that. Yeah, yeah. So um, let's uh, do this. Yo, pro, what jams what jams went down um over the past weekend that we can look at? So what we have right now, what we're gonna re react and commentate on is the Red Bull BC One Honolulu Finals with. The man from the Bay Area, representing Jive City and Renegades, B-Boy D. Menace. And on the other side, Jay, can you uh, tell well, who he is? Yeah, so we got uh, we got Maka over here in the finals. Maka is an up-and-comer coming from the islands. True island boy. If you guys follow him on social media, he surfs, he shakas. This is Maka. Let's go, bro. <laughs> Let's go. Let's watch this battle. Boom, shout out to 808 Breakers making that, that Bay Area and 808 Connect. There you and go. Here from the Renegades versus uh, Maka from... BRK. BRK. I was going to say Rock Skittles for a second, but you're right. Let's go. All right, who's up first? The face-off. The face-off. Almost mocking each other right there, huh? With the head nod on beat. Oh yeah. Creating the rhythm, a side by side walk. If you walk, I'm gonna stay still, Maka says. But hold yeah. on, got the rhythm in, in the spine, in the cervical right there. It's connected to the cortex. 
All right. Up first, we got my man, D Menace. The front flip. I like flips off the bat. Yeah. They lose energy when they top rock first. Yeah. The oh, head spin, man. freeze. Yo, shout out to the Tony Style design on his shirt. That's sick. Yep. Tony Style. Was that on beat? I think that was. Yeah. Well, D Menace is really about trying to connect every movement to the music. Mm. A lot of people don't have handstands before they learn air freezing. You can kind of see what happened right there with D Menace. That was a very, uh, not a very well executed ending with that air freeze. Maka looking smooth. Nice. Halo tap no halo tap no. Oh shoot. On beat. Yeah, he, I think he tried to nail it. Like, hey, this is how you freeze. You know what I'm saying? If you're like Morris and you're using your eye contact throughout, you would have hit that freeze on. You would have delayed that spin until he hit it. Um, smoother execution though. Nice and snappy with from Masa. I like that. Well, playing the mind game, going back and forth right now, huh? That reminds me of uh, one of the, the young OGs out of Hawaii. He used to do this a lot when Maka's doing uh, Dez from Rocksteady Crew. Dez and Dez. Word. Shout out to Dez and Leonard. So the thing is how uh, d Man started his round. He started kind of with the headspin to say Halo. To me, that's and that could have cost him it because of a, like maybe a repeat. You know what I'm saying? Let's come on. You, you can already kind of predict this formula, which you never want to do. Right. Uh, you never want to be predictable. A lot of shapes up top. I like it. I like what I'm seeing. Hand works. Munch. Ooh. He revisited the leg formation. And I like the full work up in the space of your opponent like that. W went back to the center to finish off. That's a, that's a smart state play. Okay, so it's three rounds. It's three rounds. Last round for D Menace. I like that. Okay, nice. That was nice. Good round. Good last round for Dennis. D Menace. Let's see, last round for Maka. That's been, that's been a little bigger right there. The, the non local motion or the non step dancing. He's keeping it in breaking context, which I like. He's not hopping into trendy grooves. I like that. Taking his time. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Taking his time. Mm. All right. Clean ending. Face his yeah. opponent. Um, yeah, it kind of looked more attacking and composed all throughout. Or just to give it a, a surface analysis. Um, yeah. He menace is kind of rough around the edges. But musical, which is good for, I, mean, I, I don't know how long he's been breaking. Judging from his movement base and what he did, it doesn't seem like he was breaking very long. Again, rough around the edges, not very much proprioception or awareness upside down. Uh, he had head spins and stuff like that, but the air freeze level, it's, it's so overlooked and under trained. Set up like this first. Understand what your spine feels like running from having control with the arm and understanding what your head to your mm -hmm. tail feels like upside down, vertical, stacked before you as a part of hitting the freeze. Don't just hit the freeze like that. Uh, right. It's a good tale of somebody who's, who's still kind of has a base beginner understanding of their body. I think I think the problem is um, to me sometimes. Uh, the challenge that Dennis or Dimenis has is that he's really trying to hit the beat all the time. Mm -hmm. And I always tell clients or students, like, sometimes you got to let it go. Sometimes you got to let go of the beat and think of the move first. Sometimes. Because if you don't got it, if you force it, you're going to shut the momentum down, right? Mm -hmm. And to stick. So if you noticed, Maka did more of a plank freeze and stuck it harder. Simpler freeze, right? A little bit easier to execute, but he was able to stick it, right? Like the While the one arm was kind of because he's trying to find the balance and then, you know, which is harder. Why? Because you'll, 
you're on, you're on two hands to one hand versus Maka. He could wait for it, and he's still resting on his head and here. And then, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's the that's the challenge, right? That's the challenge, I think. So the winner, of course, is uh, B Boy Maka from BRK. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, like what we talked about, uh, the possibility of Dennis losing is because of. Well, here's another thing that that could play a factor, is that he started he started his first round with the front flip, then went to head spins. Mm -hmm. His second round started in a head spin. Yeah, you know I mean, which was like almost like the first round, and then two of the rounds both ended in one arm freezes. Mm -hmm. So just on the the concept of repeating, that's already could play a factor of what the judges saw. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and again, if you're going to do a flip, it needs to be off the bat or it needs to be unpredictable, either one or the two. Once you set up with the top rock and then you step back and do a freeze, it's it's kind of it's not the way to maximize what a flip is to do, which is right, an right. awesome rebuttal to take the energy away from somebody who just went up. or yeah. it's, a, it's an attention getter. Right. Right? Once you go up and top rock and then set up, it kind of negates that. It right. diminishes the effect of it somewhat. Uh Another thing to note here is positional clarity with his movements, with his steps, mm -hmm. with his direction changes. It's choppy. It's 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 unrefined. Um, and and again, when you tie it into everything, it's just a level of body control that he doesn't quite have yet. Maka has that body control. His positional clarity is on point, and he was so comfortable with his postures and his position that he could slow down and keep it in contact right. and pick back up. It's harder for someone to do that. There was a direction change and D-Man is sort of super choppy. And it's like, oh, you weren't you weren't sure what was going on. Um, I, I know you commented on this and we, we talk about this with certain people who have that traditional footwork style. Um, it's choppy. It's not, it's, there isn't very much positional clarity, but it works. And, and a lot of people um light scene because it, it kind of ties us and relates us to our, our cultural ancestors right the the originators not so much the case in this one because there isn't very much patterns and footsteps for that apply to this but again that's mechanically and body intelligence and strength and functionality wise maka was clearly the guy on this on top of delivery on top of style they both battled good right I agree. Um, uh, the biggest problem about guys that really want to dance is that. And, and we, we kind of talked about it with uh, Jeff Rowe and Skillroy. Mm -hmm. Kind of same almost body type. If you want to hit the beat, you're sacrificing a lot because it, especially if you have longer limbs and stuff like that. It's like almost like we just watched a little G. We're, ask, we're ask, asking him to put a break right when he does a flare like on timing. It's going to be very hard just to stop on a dime. And I think with uh, with B-Boys, this is a challenge, right? Because you have this centrifugal force coming. You have these things happening, and you're trying to hit that beat. And sometimes you got to let it go to execute. Like, it's kind of like it's one or the other, right? It's mm -hmm. either I'm on beat or I execute. Or if we're looking at masters of their body, right, people – they're able to do that. And then they find it um, when you're in total control in every millimeter of space from a position or controlling the position in every millimeter of space until the next position, that transition to the next position, you can stop, you can segment, and you can come and pick back up on it when you're ready. And there's other tools and drills you could do for that. Let's just use the three step or the six step for an example. You can segment depending on the math and where you are within the music and what the music sounds like. Um, you could stop midway, you could double time, you could step twice, you could slow down. There are things you could do, but it, it, again, it requires control and body control. Word. So, yeah. What's the next one? Bro? The next one is out here in Northern California. We have the Red Bull qualifier uh, in Sacramento and the finals are two local kids one guy and i want to be too biased from floor gangs and fallen kings my man cno aka kobe versus raul okay from elephant graveyard and elephant graveyard is a crew with levix 
So this is kind of her partner. Her, her, her she, she practices with him. So you'll see that style. So you see kind of like the dancing floor game style and kind of the the move, the calm, cool, collected movement of my man Raul, aka the Raul the Tool. So <laughs> Mix is in what crew again? You said from Elephant uh, Elephant Graveyard. No, no. What's her other crew? With Frank oh, uh, Orb. Circle Fire. So, so is Raul Circle Fire as well? No, or? no, okay. no. I don't. Know I would I say <laughs> the history of Raul. I think Raul had more of an effect of more of a b-boy b-boy approach versus like circle fires like all styles free like all styles freestyle hip-hop house influencing and breaking which you still see levix d does but raul is more into like this is the sh breaking shapes and stuff like that so let's watch this battle b-boy raul the tool versus c note yeah i don't know any of these b-boys how long you think they've both been breaking uh, C note has been breaking for 10 years, Raul, maybe less than 10. Okay, but two of the like C note is he's won a Red Bull uh NorCal finals before, he's been to Hawaii oh, for wow. the West Coast finals back in 2015, I believe. Yep, yeah, yeah, get it rolling. Let's check him out. Yeah, Co Kobe and Ra Raul the tool. Yeah. I appreciate the nomenclature. What? Oh, this footage is dark. I, yeah. don't like, I don't like dark circles like that. I love it. Yeah? Up first, Raul the tool. I with the intricacy. Details, man. Misdirection. Yeah, yeah. A, a lot of shapes um, per minute. We got Kobe. Now, if we're talking about personality and dancing. This the guy? Yep. I've never seen this guy. Nice. Yo, nice like two and a half, three rounder. Yeah. In the I music. Like, see what that 90 did right there? Homie homie was hitting all these shapes, but he wasn't generating that energy like that. what that right. 90 accomplished right there. So he stole it immediately. Homie did, right. did some nice stuff. Again, intricacies, like you said, shapes, positions, direction yeah. changes, all that stuff. But boom, he just hit him up with some straight force right there. Straight up the mouth. This is where the music is like, if you don't rock it right, it's hard because there's that pause. So I think that was giving him a little bit of trouble because he's like, flow to flow to flow to flow. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, it's better than not acknowledging it, but yeah, yeah. You maximize. You can still move slow during the dead yeah. space within that section, classic yeah. section. Yeah, this guy got the crowd energy though, right? Yeah, look, look at everybody. All right, ah, pretty strong. Just clean our shapes, right? Yeah, wow, oh. oh. Kind of like what we were talking about with Morris, though, right? Yeah. He, and he's in Morris's crew, too. He's in Fallen Kings with Morris also. Mm. So the winner was uh, C-Note, Kobe. Yeah, yeah. Man. Hometown hero, too. Hometown hero right there. Hometown hero. He definitely outperformed them right there. And yeah, so this is where, like, when we talked about, like, with uh, D-Menace, you know, we talked about, you know, he's trying to, like, land on the beat. You know what I mean? Well, C-Note, he didn't have to necessarily land on the beat. He happened to be there. It's like he didn't force it. It was very natural. And you could tell his presence is charisma, right? He has that, he has that, um, what I call, you know, like, people call it flavor. I call it presence. It's like. Are you have you made your mark in 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 that circle, in that area, in that venue? And that's something that he's good at. And that's the hardest thing to probably teach in breaking. Someone like KML has that. Someone like Machine has that. You know what I mean? Someone like Why Not has that. It's not necessarily a technical thing. It's more like acting, stage presence. Yeah. You know? Which is a part of breaking, you know. 
for all the technical heads, you know, that want to disagree with me, he didn't do flare 90 flare. That is a skill set as well, right? Is stage presence is a skill set. What do you think? No, I mean, uh, turning the switch on, right? When you, when you talk about KML, you talk about why not, you talk about machine, that's what it looked like he did. And that's hard to do, right? That's a performance uh, part of what we're doing. Like, okay, boom, I'm going to battle. Let me turn this on. Let me, let me get the, the, let me give the crowd my environment, what I want from them. And they gave it back. And, and I don't know what the battles look like. He seemed like the home crowd, crowd uh, favorite, which probably played a factor into how. Oh, yeah. Hometown, hometown, home field advantage is always a plus, yeah. right? There was an energy ap amplification, you know, from, from both ends. He gave it to them. They're like, ah, and he felt it from them as well. Um, so the reason he was able to hit the beat in a way that looked easy to put it simply, is because he he understands the end position very good. Mm. He, he jumped back in that Valdez and, and stuck that. Yeah. He, knows, he, he can access speed. He knows how to access speed um, with his body mechanics. D Menace, you could tell like he doesn't, he maybe not might not know his speed just yet. He hasn't developed that. So he needs to keep a pace, and sometimes his body just can't keep up with the steps and shapes he's putting out. Right. Kobe kept it simple, so, so yeah. you know, his choice of movement was good. And what was impressive is he was able to do these spins, like that that last round. He was able to do it at the very at the end of his round. That that yeah, set. that's I mean, dude, it's not easy to do. No, his first round he did a two thousand, but he did it inwards, which right. I, I wouldn't count that as a repeat. And again, the fact that he did it at the end and the setup made it a lot more difficult. Yeah, he came from like a low footwork. A stab and straight. I was like, I've never even seen him do that before. And that's my crewmate. I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> so what you could see, even if you've never seen him before, I've never seen him before, is right. he rose to the occasion. He turned yeah. the on. Yes. And yes. that in itself is what we're all trying to do. Yeah, we're developing your style. Yeah, we have strategy. Yeah, we train a certain way. But when you get there, boom, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. 100. He, there, he swung. He swung first, and he kept swinging, and he kept landing. That's what happened there. Um, it could have been a lot closer battle if homie um, Raul the Tool, he, he killed the energy. Right? He had his thing going. Um, Kobe was going like this. He was hitting those nice high peaks, giving good contrast to his movements. Set, the setups were, were making the highs really, really noticeable and prominent. Right. right? Um Raul was keeping it at a nice mid level with his tech, his tech work. But when he slowed down to hit the beat, he was like, "Nah, yeah, ah, move, yeah, yeah." And I, I think that's what people, that's what people, b boys and b girls are trying to understand now. I think that we just talked about it. It's like almost like D, D Menace and Raul almost did the same thing. They sometimes you have the music's with you, and sometimes it's against you. And you got to know when to have it for you. You have to leverage the music. And the problem is right now, and I think especially being from the Bay, we have to do that. Mm -hmm. We have to be about the music. Yeah. That was our style. That was our thing. When you look at Machine, look at, you look at Kid David, we have to. If we don't, we're whack. I think sometimes we got to let that go because what's more important? The execution or the music and yeah. it's a competition so what, sometimes what, you have to make a sacrifice you know what i'm saying yeah. sometimes you have to make the sacrifice what, what we've seen here is a difference in love as well right. kobe probably came up vibing to that track right there oh yeah yeah other yeah. boy he looks like he listens to some other stuff i don't know yeah. i don't know him i don't know what he's listening to mm -hmm. but that's the track right there when is that bump pause yeah. Dun, dun, you know what I mean? When it yeah. comes back in, man, when you love that, you're like, huh? I'm going to show you. He was like half in. That's all. That's the easiest way to put it. When he was like, oh, okay, I know it's coming. I heard this track before. Let me, you know, here it comes. Let me hit it. So he's like basic kick out stance, right? Right. But if you love that, 
You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. If you love that track, if you came up on that track, if you feel that track, people need to study more. And you brought this up, man. And you've been putting me on this, too. We need to... That's why we're here, gearheads, baby. Yeah, that's why we're here, baby. That's why we're here. Yes, sir. From gearheads for gearheads. Can you wrap up in this battle before we wrap up? No, I was dancing to the static. It made like this little, this little rhythm. It's like da, 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 da. anyway. I can't dance. That's why I'm here. Uh, is, um, it, is it? Is it? It's is gone. It yeah. Okay. Yo, I could yo, add that part out. Nah, it's all good. All right. Um, whatever. Yo, you want to add anything else to that battle right there? Yo, shout outs to both of those B boys. Yeah, shout out to Raul the Tool and C Note. Of uh, Fallen Kings and Floor Gangs. Uh, give now uh, shout out. Raul's come from a long way, to be honest. He's been winning a lot of things. He won uh the Bonnie and Clyde in uh in Florida with Levix before uh, Levix, like uh was in the finals for the Orlando Open. Recently, so, huh? Recently. Recently, yeah. yeah and I, um, he's won the Doom Room out there, and I believe in San Antonio, which is a dope jam where they just play MF Doom music, as super eclectic uh jam. That one day I want to check out. Um, he's been doing really good. So this is the first. Like, he won with me. We had the uh, Pokemon battle. Ah, no. He was with me. Okay. So I got to give him props because this is his year. This is the year that he's actually been winning stuff. He's so he gave to the work. finals. He, he didn't do that last year. He's doing that this year. So no. props to him. Kobe, well-deserved. He's been around for a while. I always tell my man, you know, you got to be in the right place at the right time. That's all. That's all it is, bro. <laughs> That's all it is. Yeah, man. Yo, shout outs to all the competitors who watched today. D Menace, good, good to meet him and know him. Not officially, but I never knew him before. Right, um, right. To make it to the finals, yo, yeah, I've never easy. Been to the finals in a cipher. I've tried it before. It's hard, man. So yeah. Much uh, uh, shout outs to the home crowd, uh, the hometown, Kama Aina, Maka. That's what I like to see local boys stepping up. And yeah, the other two from Sacramento, man. Yeah, man. Those don't watch that. Hell yeah. So before we sign out, tell us about our sponsor, Zen World. If you didn't get it in the beginning, let me tell you guys again. Zen World from Zen World are found at zenworld.com. This is our CBD sponsor. Profo, what is CBD? Let me tell you. CBD is a cannabis product, non psychoactive, all natural, non habit forming, that helps you feel good. Do you need to know more? Well, let me tell you, right? They have ingestibles. That means you you can eat it and it tastes good and it helps you from the inside out. And you have topicals, which makes you feel good immediately. And that's what I like to use. I use roll-ons. They have a little, there's a ball. I use it just like my massage ball right where I'm hurt immediately. And if you do that, your body helps you heal. There, there's something powerful about the mind-body connection. So not only do you feel good and it does help with inflammation, going into your body from your skin it yeah your, your mind cooperates with you in the healing process with it it's it's pretty awesome stuff oh um, yeah I, I i mean even for me i've taken cbd after a workout as far as like uh cbd gummies and stuff like that after yeah. workout it's good to take it just relax and you know what i mean and let let them not, not so much for the mind but just the body to kind of just yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it, it's good it's a new emerging technology for sports performance, right? We're going to see it blow up uh, coming up as it is becoming a sport. So, guys, if you guys are looking to get the edge in what we're doing, look into it. Look into CBD products. If there isn't anything in your hometown, we send. Zen World will send to you no matter 15 where 15% are. off with the promo oh. code GEARHEADS. GEARHEADS, that's right. Um, also, check out my YouTube Again, I run BTR Breaking. Check out my Instagram right there at the bottom right here. Uh, we have incredible, incredible free content that we put a lot of time and energy into. Uh, years, blood, sweat, and years. And then Profile, what about yours? Yeah, no. Nah, um, as you guys know, you know, I have the logo in the back, the trades. Been doing it since uh, 2016 and where I interviewed people from B-Boy, Why Not, Poe One, you know, J-Rock from Style Elements, 
Issei and Wing Zero, um, like uh, Rocks Right, uh, Remind, Lino. You can find that all on my YouTube, uh, P R O F O W O N. Or you can find me on my Instagram where you can see me actually dancing instead of doing uh, interviewing people at P R O F O underscore F L G Z. And yeah, man, that's where you can like, like look both of us up. You can see, like, you can check out uh, J Soul's BTR and uh, learn some stuff, man. He knows it. Obviously, through this episode, you saw how he's an expert on uh, kinesiology and, how, and chain of movement. So I even go to him for for help. And uh, and I've learned a lot, actually, this episode. So uh, I'm about to uh, uh, apply it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, man. Again, it's all a science. What I have is just the, the first principles. That's what I operate under. It's far from perfect, but it is closer to understanding what we're doing exactly as we are uh, experimenting with dynamic force with our human body. Um, yeah. Yo, but I just want to mention something real quick about Profo. He says the trades, but he was one of the first guys even before the trades, the epicenter. I remember that stuff. So oh, yeah. Profo, for decades, not only practitioner, Student, just digging up all this information for you guys. You don't have to. You should. You should talk to everyone directly. But but come and get a get a preview and get a good taste for a lot of these people that he had selected. And he's been around the world. And he's, you know, just a historian that is going to get you a better understanding of our culture. So important. And knowledge is power. That's what our episode was about. So again, to all our gearheads out there, we love you. Thank you for the support. Make sure you guys subscribe. Bell for notifications so you guys stay posted on all the information coming out. And also stay posted on our shorts that we're putting out and our hot takes. From there all the episodes, we're making it nice and digestible to lead you right back. It's strategy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right. Well, from gearheads to gearheads, thank you. Peace. See you later. Yeehaw! Press that end button, pro. Yeehaw!